make art, you think that it could be a vehicle of change. So that's what has uh, led me to this issue. Can art be used to come up with some change? Can it have a uh, message? Can it have a purpose beyond being object of high value? Obviously, all of you know that art is an object of very high value. So first of all, when I start talking about modern art, my own cousins, my friends say, is modern and contemporary art a scam? Sometimes they see a blotch, right? Sometimes they see very interesting patterns, but they don't see any clear thing emerging out of it. Sometimes they just see cans of things. They just see objects being put. They see, uh, let's say, a shark put in formalin. So is it a scam? That's one of the first questions. Um, the other one is, my five-year-old could have done it. If you press them hard, they do admit that he didn't or she didn't. But that's one of the things that comes about skills at some levels. That's interesting. Okay. So let me uh, talk to you about art. So it, everything that I'm showing is not modern art. In fact, uh, the corner uh, left uh, end, uh, basically for you, uh, is an old statue of Venus, prehistoric statue. There's prehistoric painting of horses. Now. Below that, you can even see Napoleon, you can see uh, Asian uh, classical work. Below that, you can see Spanish work from 1,000 years ago. But uh, on the right-hand side, in the middle, you can see Mondrian squares. You'll see quite a bit of contrast in the art that you're seeing. If you go to the right-hand side, you'll see uh, this painting, and then you'll see Picasso's statue. And with looking at that Picasso statue, you might actually have a feeling that my five-year-old could have actually done that. But why is Picasso special? And I would argue that Picasso is special, not because, not because Picasso made it, but when it was made and how differently it was made and what kind of things it stimulated. And I'll get to a little bit of neuroscience of it also. Now, I would even argue that the paintings below, which are Campbell's soup, most of you would be aware of it, right? Campbell's soup taken, the image replicated multiple times, everyday object. In fact, if you have to make a statement about commercialization, isn't it a wonderful statement? Honestly, it doesn't require much uh, talent to make it, but it does require a crazy idea. And it requires a bold thing to say that this is a scam. A scam which exposes the hypocrisy of modern life. So at some level, this might get you thinking that maybe a different way of doing art which is non-representational can do something. But most of you might still think, hey, I would like my portrait to be made in a perfect way. Well, I think that's a good piece of art and should be still done. It's not like art should have an expiry date. At least, I would not like to see art having an expiry date. But the greatest thing that anything has done for painting is actually invention of camera, because static depiction, right? just copying the world, this passive recorder of history is no longer required because that has set you free. Now, once you're free, you can do crazy things such as putting uh, tomato, this Campbell soup thing. You can also do what uh, likely Michael Duchamp did is put in a toilet in a gallery because he's, even art can be self-critical. It basically said, well, where is modern art going? At that time, it was a very interesting statement and it was smuggled in the gallery and exhibited, right? So it can be self-critical also. But, so modern art and contemporary art, I'll not go much into the distinctions, can actually do some very interesting things, can make very interesting statements. Um, now, but you might still say, I see a lot of rubbish around, so there must be something wrong. So who controls modern art? That might be one of the questions in your mind. And the other question would be about scale or idea. Right? If, can you call yourself painter if you cannot really paint well, if you just have an idea? Well, I would argue uh, about both the points in some ways. Here, so what you do need to have is art should have some purpose, it should say something. Now, the purpose uh, or what it's trying to say need not be for others. It could be even for oneself. I recently gave a talk about how art can be used as a therapy. Even if your art doesn't mean anything to anyone else, does it speak to you? That is absolutely vital. Now, 
what is its image? Yes, current image, unfortunately, is uh, at times that's something that is beyond us, but not everything has to be. In music, the brilliant performance that you just heard before, did you ask what is the meaning of music? Or did you enjoy the rhythms? Did you enjoy the beats? So can you enjoy that about color? Can you enjoy that about form? Right? So even an aesthetic appreciation, which is not a complete appreciation of a painting, is possible. So in some cases, there is meaning. In some cases, it's, the painting is not about meaning. Painting is actually play with the elements that make up the painting. Okay? Now, what are the hallmarks of modern and contemporary art? That is honestly the same as what even makes art exciting. Because if an artisan of a craftsman is making a brilliant piece of work, is she or he not doing a better job than somebody who gets paid a million dollars for an expensive uh, piece of painting? Right? That will be a question in your mind. The thing that separates art from craft is novelty. And in fact, that is why, that is the case for modern art. There are a lot of cases against modern art, there are a lot of cases against contemporary art too. But that's the case for modern art. I would say something that shocks you, something that surprises you. In fact, now even things could be subtle, but they may appeal to you, they may ask, they may make you question some new things, and that is what is needed. So that is different than regular aesthetic piece. So that's what separates basically high art, I think interesting art, uh, from craft. And craft is also very valuable. Now, the neuroscience of art is very interesting. What happens is art stimulates your reward pathways, but in addition, it stimulates interesting activity in front and low. You make new connections. Why did Picasso appeal at in his time, you were used to seeing objects as they were. Now, a distorted perspective gave you some new things. You saw the face, but you also saw something different. So it stimulated new connections, it stimulated new thoughts. In fact, if you see too many Cubist paintings all the time, and that's all you're doing, in fact, something which is abstract expressionist might strike you. So in fact, art is about surprise. But that's what even rewards are. If everything is pleasant around you, another happy day would not appear pleasant. So things have to be surprising. So that's what is an important purpose of modern art, and that is underlying neurobiology, that there is underlying neurobiology of dopamine, and there's also an interesting underlying neurobiology of frontal lobe. So in this frontal lobe activity, also points to a very interesting thing, that when you think of artistic geniuses, you tend to have an image that many of them have mental disorders. Well, the idea that all people who have mental disorders would be artistically gifted is obviously wrong, and all artists would have some mental disorders is also wrong, but the fraction of artists having mental disorders is slightly higher than the rest of the population, and it does arise from the fact that making unusual connections in front of low is part of what creates a new image. Now, coming to all of that, can, I hope I've made you think a little bit differently about this novelty in art. I made you think a little bit differently about how art is different than craft. Anything beautiful is not art. But coming to the main thing which I started talking about, can there be message in art? Okay? So, I strongly believe that they can be, but it depends on how you take it. And some people might have a message, some might not. I'll take you through what really appeals to me. On one side is a split image. Okay? On the left hand side of yours, um, you're seeing a split image which is of bipolar disorder. On the right hand side also, you're seeing sort of equivalent of what I would call mood swings. Can you bring this important issue of neurological disorder, which people in India, because of taboos around mental health, do not talk about, by putting such artwork in public places. You can do some very interesting things by taking such things and making people aware. Now, alcohol is either demonized or just celebrated. Can you present a more nuanced, interesting perspective? On the left, you're seeing a lady enjoying just one drink of excellent wine, right? On the right-hand side, you are seeing three paintings which reflect different kinds of chaos. One is hallucinations, second is isolation, and below is disintegration of individual. Can you also see depression? Can you also see societal chaos? If you bring these things, can you 
bring a message that alcohol in excess is wrong and alcohol in moderation for certain groups can be good. Can you bring this thing forward through art? And these are actually my own pieces that I'm showing you. So I use art to explore these things. Now, can you even take an important thing of Bombay Blast, which we heard about today, and talk about what is the fundamental problem of South Asia? So in the image of Gandhiji and Jinnah, you see the backdrop of Hotel Taj, which is burning. Now, if you were to do art as you define art, that's an important point, right? If you think of conventional art, merging of these two would not be appropriate because this is not a photo image. So that's where modern art, right? Where I have taken these two historic image and morphed it with burning touch and painted it with acrylics, that brings forward something interesting. So basically letting go of chains, letting go of boundaries has allowed modern art to do very interesting things or contemporary art to do very interesting things. And what happens with democratization uh, is that a lot of bad things also come in. And what happens in art is that there is a business. So it's not just simply about talent. Why some paintings are, cost, uh, are priced very high, even in millions, is because sometimes, let us say, a rich guy wants to um, say that I want a rebate of, let's say, $10 million. Can I make my art be a prize, be sort of valued at $10 million, even though its fair price may not be such? Can you control its flow? So there is a lot of business angle to it, of what gets judged. There is another basic human instinct which is behind it also, is ownership. See, with music, excellent piece of music on your DVD is going to cost you a few pennies, right? Or if it's a free download on YouTube, it's not costing you anything. In case of painting, because the idea is not just that I'm seeing a good reprint, the idea is that I'm owning something. So it's a real estate, so it's not just art. That complicates issues. So even though art can be used to give out a very strong, interesting message, this factor confounds these things. I'll tell you about some other thing. I told you about some societal things about addiction, bipolar disorder, uh, and uh, terrorism or the split society in India, which is torn on religious fundamentalist lines. Um, can it be even useful for your own self, right? It's not about giving message to somebody else, but can you even inform yourself what's going inside you? So, can you tell sort of a story or have a narrative in art to inform yourself? And the way I sort of did it is a theme which I said making we are making, because a lot of things happened in my own life where things were not uh, falling in place. So I was dealing with bad circumstances and I was putting up a fake smile, right? Because if you don't put up a fake smile, you don't smile to people, you are socially not acceptable. So you have to still be pleasant despite a lot of problems in your life. I slowly got used to it, I started solving things and still was, things were still circling around. So I called the second part circling around and I painted it with just a lot of circles. But that was my way of communicating back to myself. And finally I painted something which I called breaking free because I found direction. This happened after some very unpleasant things, like my account got hacked because of political activism, uh, my career ha had some um, sort of um, negative uh, things, and then suddenly I was rising back again, because what I said is, I'll change society just through art and science, and I'll not focus on other things, I needed to find my direction. So that was sort of the breaking free movement, and when things became very positive, and everything was about just back to my personal life. So, if I show you through these things, there's a person who's engaged, but there's a monkey-like fake smile. On the right-hand side, you'll see a fake smile. In fact, the even face is gone. But it's not just simple fake smile. That's basically made with bones. That's made with wax. Okay, so there is that element on it. Now, this painting, you might simply see a fake smile and there's cages, but what might not be obvious to you, there are 70 such layers. What you're seeing is the 70th layer. So that is why it was basically called destructive, uh, creative destruction that I'm basically destroying each layer one after another, okay? Now this is the kind of texture it gets because sometimes I used even knives, sometimes I've even used bullets. I've shot at my paintings and done some interesting things. But then, in circling while, you can again see the medium changes. This is digital medium. 
Things can even be on a very large scale, not a small canvas. That's me, I'm a fairly large person, and you can see how big the painting is. Right? Sometimes you need to express something bigger in life and you need a bigger canvas, and sometimes it could be your notebook. When things are good in life, there are angles which maybe a lot, lot, lot of conventional painters paint, right? Femme fatalis. Most male painters would paint a female nude, and when things are fine, you can focus on those things, and you can focus on even washing each painting several times just after you make it. So each layer contributes a little bit. So it's just the opposite of the previous thing, where things are starting to add up instead of each layer destroying the previous one. Now, what can also be done is you can just simply play with colors, right? So that's just showing your celebration. So these two kind of ideas of creative destruction, okay, where one layer is basically being made on top of another, where previous layer gets hidden, that has been captured in a movie and destructive uh, creation where I take a painting, I make one layer and Im immediately wash it in the washing machine. That and then there is a slowly gradual building up of the painting that also has been captured in a movie. I would strongly urge you to see this movie, I Am Who I Am, uh, which was directed by Vikas Babu. It is basically asking questions about human identity. It will tell you what I have been trying to also talk to you. Can you discover yourself, right? Can you ask your purpose in life? Because now I am succeeding in making some really cutting edge AI, I am succeeding in making new medicines, I am coming up with biomedical innovation. It gave me purpose, right? All of my failures in life in trying to bring about a social change gave me a purpose and art enabled me to talk to myself. So this is about finding sort of who you are. And uh, other movie, What's the First About Dr. Sukhan Kurana, that was directed by a debutant uh, director, Rakshit Nair, and what he basically did is he captured how I burn the painting or how I uh, put it in water or how I even shoot it or how I attack it with knives. So he was very really intrigued by the fact that uh, painting is not just brush and canvases. Painting can be anything, anything which is plainer. So in the end, when you are judging a painting, what I am hoping is, end of it, next time you would try to find a story behind that painting. It's not just about whether the painting looks good to you. It's important that it should be visually appealing. But I'll even appeal to the old Sanskrit concept. One of the rasas is vibhats, right? You might say disgusting. If a painting disgusts you, I think that's more important painting than something which doesn't move you, which is just a uh, you know, painting of a pretty lady or a nice scenery. So painting must evoke feelings, right? Painting must make you even think. It need not be an emotional response also. It could be an intellectual response also. So next time when you look at a painting, don't dismiss it as my five-year-old would have done it. I'm not saying there are not bad paintings out there. There are a lot of bad modern art. There are a lot of pieces of bad contemporary art, just like there are a lot of pieces of bad music out there. But the fact is, with the democratization, with the easy access, with ability to do new things, in fact, including now, artificial intelligence is making art along with humans. With things, it's not just Photoshop, it's AI working with humans to create new art. How things are fundamentally changing, you, art can give you a new perspective on life, and I hope you enjoy your next painting when you watch it. Thank you.